I love Jane Monheit. It's as simple as that. Whenever I see her, I cry. Doesn't mean she's necessarily singing. I just cry. We could be having lunch and I cry. But when she sings Rainbow Connection, there aren't enough Kleenex boxes to save me. She's a brilliant, brilliant artist. Here's Jane Monheit. Jane, there you are. Hi. Hello. I wanted to talk something about that's very important in your life. And that's eye makeup. Oh, yes. In fact, I have very little on right now. I know. Now. I looked at your eyes and I went, okay, that, is that why you're wearing glasses today? Well, well, I, you know, I've been wearing less just because I love these glasses so much. They're really beautiful. Thank you. And they're comfortable. Where'd like, you get them? I, you know, I got them off like a discount website. Like they oh, were just wonderful. These inexpensive frames. Thanks. But they're super comfortable. And because they're big, I can yes see everything and yes. so i'm so addicted to wearing them now I'm, it's like they've become more important than like the lashes if you can well, believe it but they never come on stage with me the lashes come on stage no i know i have tinted blue so i could wear those and then no one knows that i don't have on any eye makeup i know Ooh, everyone's waiting for us to talk about the purple and rosy we're getting there i feel because i'm very bad in eye makeup I know, no, you know you're how, not. I know you know how to do the cat eye. Can you explain just in a, how to do a cat eye in a, just a few words? Well, all you're really doing is extending the line of your eye just a little tiny bit. If you think of it that way, like all you're doing is making your actual eye line longer, then it's suddenly easy. But if you smile, it moves. <laughs> you can't smile and do it because you, you, can, have, you have to so, be very serious. Yeah, and your mouth has to be open. Otherwise, your hand doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. Um, okay, that was riveting. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, I wanted to know, uh, what was the first lullaby that you remember as a child? Oh, my goodness. There's this song that my mother used to sing to me, and I don't know what it's called, or and I can't even remember how it goes. Uh -huh. But I remember um, there was a lyric about it was a, it was about flowers and uh, it was I think it was called Lily Bells. Oh, Lily that's Bells. cute. Yeah, it was this little song. And if I if I heard this song now, I would start bawling. Oh, my uh -huh. God. My mind. Sort of like the way I am with Rainbow Connection. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. Which reminds me also uh, in the intro, I said that uh, I said my I think my opening line was Jane Monheit always makes me cry even when we're having lunch. <laughs> what is it about you when you sing? Do you know the audience is crying when you're singing? Can you tell? Um, I usually can guess that they are because I usually am too. Right. Um, you know, and and I know the people in the crowds now because I've been to all of these venues so many times. The same people always come back. I talk to them at the CD signings. I know mm -hmm. them on social media. You know what I mean? So I have a good idea of who's there and who they are and how they're feeling. Um, but yeah, I generally if I'm crying, I figure I'm not the only one. Yeah, you, you your voice just kills me. It just. <laughs> absolutely kills me when you were a little kid um when did you start did you sing for your parents always i uh, ad nauseum they wished i would be quiet probably they i mean i was the kid who was putting on shows and casting my little brother and just yeah i was that annoying kid did they bring you out at dinner parties uh yeah they did mm -hmm. they did they showed me off yeah they how did. old were you then um, I was still little and but ranging all the way up. I mean, I never really stopped, did I? I'm sure I was behaving the same way at 16 right. that I was at six. But I would sing in stores and stuff too. Like I remember my mother would run errands with me in the stroller and I would sing to everybody and they'd give me free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you had an act even then. Oh my god, I did. I would get a peach at the farm stand. Yeah. If I, I, and I don't remember where else, but I would sing for free stuff, but I remember very specifically singing for peaches at the farm stand all the time. <laughs> the next time I see you, I'm going to throw a peach on stage, but <laughs> <laughs> no one will understand that. Um, what was, you remember the first thing about music, the first piece of music or the, the first thing about music that really moved you as a young child when you knew you had to live music for your life you know that was so early that i don't remember it i mm. just know from my family's accounts of the way i behaved around music 
mm -hmm. it was always apparent. What did you do? I was always singing and dancing, making uh -huh. such a racket. I would I would have to get taken out of weddings because I'd start <laughs> yowling along with the thing, or I'd be dancing and I'd have to be taken out of places. And like, yeah, I was a performer. <laughs> and you still are. Um, when did you have your first act? How old were you? The first time I ever performed in front of a lot of people that weren't my family, I was eight like, years old. And it was eight? This it was eight, eight but, but it was the school choir, you know. Yes, but you and had a solo, I, right? The big solo. Of course. The what what did you solo. sing? It came upon a midnight clear. It was pretty oh, of sweet. Course. In front of my whole town at like the um, Christmas tree lighting, the town's Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Perfect. And so my first solo ever in front of people was in front of my whole town. Wow. You know what I mean? So I was, I remember it. I remember being nervous. I was eight years old. Um, it's funny because my son is so much older than that now. And that's hard for me to like imagine. Yes. But how, um, okay, how old is he now? He's 13 in a couple days. Oh, wow. The danger zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's for another interview. But yeah. <laughs> all I can say is she has the most adorable, brightest, funniest son named Jack. He's and, amazing. And maybe one day you will meet him. I know that you, uh, you came in second in a competition that I even know without seeing it you should have won uh you <laughs> no you weren't were you were in uh, a music school right or i was at i was in conservatory then i was going to manhattan school of music and uh okay. it was this big competition the international you know thelonious monk jazz vocal competition now it's the herbie hancock competition uh -huh. it's still the the institute the herbie hancock institute still exists and i'm still really involved with them they're amazing they're responsible for International Jazz Day. Like they're incredible folks. Did, wait a minute, did they cancel Thelonious Monk? I'm very angry about cancel culture. What, <laughs> oh, what no. was wrong with Thelonious? No, nothing was wrong with Thelonious at all. He wasn't canceled. It was just that um, uh, Herbie Hancock has done so much incredible work for the foundation over ah, the last 20 years. He's and a great he's, guy. Oh, he's the best. And he's so involved with the kids. Yes. And it's like so heavy that they renamed the foundation to honor him. And oh. it really had nothing to do with Thelonious. Okay. Um, yeah. It's but, all right. I won't protest or anything. I'm okay. No, no, no. It's fully just, just honoring, honoring Herbie's, you know, massive contribution. So when you explain why you didn't win that competition, please. Oh, well, I was 20 years old and the woman who won was in her 60s and was a very, you know, experienced, unbelievably killing jazz musician who could also accompany herself. And I was this kid getting up there like crooning ballads, you know, a college kid, you know what I mean? So it, they very much, you know, it, it, Terry Thornton definitely deserved to win. I did not, but, oh. <laughs> but I was thrilled that I came in second because it meant that I um, also got a lot of attention and was able to start my career because of it. What makes you choose a certain song for your act? Oh, it's always just gotta be like a gut punch. It's never um, anything more uh, involved than that. You know, I'm never going, well, you know, I really need something in the key of B flood over here. And I'm thinking that I haven't featured this composer in a while. I'm never like getting that serious about it. I'm just going, oh my God, I have to sing that. I have to. Now it's time, you know, and it'll be a tune that I've known since I was a toddler, but all of a sudden it'll just have its moment. And I'm like, okay, it's time. We're doing that one now. You know, how do you put together, how do you put together an act? Do you have a concept for it or is it just gut punches arranged in an order you like? Well, I absolutely have like a f total formula for a set list that I always use. Like my okay. shows always sort of like, I have a certain kind of opener I like, a certain kind of closer I like. I have a certain way I like to handle an intermission. Like I come from musical theater as well. So I like to, you know, create the show in a way that feels good and has a nice dramatic arc and is going to keep people interested and all of that. Um, so I, you know, very much sort of have like a bit of a formula for that, I guess, over the years. But, you know, and then there's also like, is there something I'm trying to promote right now? Mm. Has the promoter asked for a specific show or a specific theme? Um, the audience in this town, I know what they're into. Let me give it to them. That kind of thing, you know, uh, so, yeah. Talk for a minute about your new album, which are, are they called albums? What are they called? Albums, yeah. CDs, tracks, streaming? I don't know. All I know is music comes out of it. 
and <laughs> and uh, it's fantastic, and I want everybody to buy it. So I want you to talk about it. Oh, thank you. It's called Come What May. It's on Club Forty Four Records, um, which is a new label that I'm on. I, I'm obsessed with them. They're the greatest people in show business. They're amazing. Um, and my label mates are insane. It's like Billy Stritch and Nicholas King and just such a cool group of people. But um, yeah, uh, the record we made during the pandemic, um, which was a crazy experience. We made the whole thing in two days hmm. um, outside of adding on the strings. The strings went on later. You know, right. you can't you can't do that much in two days, but we did a lot. Uh, no rehearsal whatsoever because of the pandemic. Um, so I chose tunes that were sort of uh, nice and road worn. They're all songs that we've performed live in the past. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, did, what, did you have to take any precautions because of it? Well, we were all tested and, you know, quarantined and all of that kind of thing. And then we recorded in a home studio rather than a public studio um, where we were literally all in separate rooms. Mm. Um, you know, recording because you know how you isolate yourself to make an album. Yes. But yeah, uh, otherwise it was just like making any other record. It's just we had all tested in quarantine first and we did it as quickly as we could. <laughs> and it worked. Um, I saw the first Zoom show you did after you hadn't sung for almost a year. And of course you oh, opened sorry. crying. But, <laughs> but it was, it was, uh, it was phenomenal to feel that emotion, that we ha all have felt that there has been no real release of emotion during the pandemic because the only so-called arts we have uh, might be Netflix or uh, a rerun of uh, the Tony Awards from 1958. Yeah. So can you talk about just that very moment, your first show after the pandemic, when you opened your mouth for an audience for the first time? Man, it was weird. It was strange, you know what I mean? And I've since now performed for a live audience a couple times. Right. And that was strange too. And I think the only reason why it felt weird was because it just felt so normal to be back. You know, it was just like, of course, of course I'm doing this. Okay, the last year didn't happen. You know, it was it was like that. It was a feeling like that. I know my husband felt the same way playing drums. Um, Ricky Montalbano on the drums. Yeah, <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, it was just a feeling of like, oh, of course, I'm home. Yeah. So are you good? Do you, are, are bookings beginning to come in for where real shows where we can go? Yeah, they're starting to. I have a couple things on the books. Um, mm -hmm. Nothing near you, I'm afraid. But um, you I'm know, portable. Like Europe might be starting to happen a little bit over the summer. And, um, you know, because Europe in the summer is a big deal for jazz. Oh, right. You know? Yeah. So. Um, right, of course. So looking hopeful there and um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm vaccinated and ready to go. So Ab Absolutely. I remember when you were stuck in a horrible hotel outside Poland. That's all I remember. Oh my goodness. That was, that was a, I had a crazy gig. Yeah. That was, that was one for the books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Poland and I'm, I'm in a Poland. horrible hotel. <laughs> I mean, and I love Poland too. Like it was just a really bad hotel, but I love, Pol I'm Polish. I'm wicked Polish. I'm more mm -hmm. Polish than I am any other thing. Uh huh. And uh, Poland's and, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And the people are wonderful and friendly. And I don't mm -hmm. know. I, I I love traveling in Eastern Europe. I do. Meanwhile, back to the Purple Room, which is why we. Yes, that's why we're here. Why we started this. Um, how, how, what does Palm Springs say to you? You being in in Palm Springs, that whole Purple Room atmosphere. You know, my husband and I are convinced that that's where we want our future to end up. Oh, I'm we so love, happy. Please, God, move Palm near Springs me. We keep so trying. <laughs> <laughs> we love Palm Springs. And it's just, I don't know, it's such a wonderful, friendly place. I don't know. We feel very at home there. And we're always like, yeah, that's our someday. Palm Springs, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. I have a realtor if you need one. Don't worry. <laughs> um, Michael Holmes. You know, Michael is so special. He, he of course, couldn't open, and he was classified as a theater, not a restaurant. So that's at the very bottom. Oh. Yeah, they didn't care that he could serve food. It was it's still at the very bottom of the openings. So he had to he had to pay all of his employees out of his own pocket. Oh my goodness! It's quite amazing. People don't realize how hard these venues like Purple Room, Catalina, Birdland. 
yeah. uh, and how and how special they are. Mm -hmm. um, I I want to thank you for uh, for doing this for Michael and for the program. To me, we're saving art. Yes, uh, we are. Tell me why this is important to you. These these campaigns. Well, you know, I mean, these venues are. Um, they're incredibly special because they're small. You know what I mean? They're small and they're the places where we really get to know our audiences. They're the places where we're all really hanging together. They're the places where the show feels like a party that you invited everyone to. You know what I mean? It's like, that's where as performers, we really do what we do best. That's where we really entertain is in these small rooms. In a big theater, we can't do that as easily. You know what I mean? The best of us can pull it off with no difference. You know what I mean? But I'm not one of those greats, you know, like when I'm in a small room, that's when I'm really myself, you know? Oh, you, you, whatever room you're in, it works. <laughs> <laughs> trust, trust me. I once went to a, a very, a really just total solid jazz thing and you did a completely different kind of set because <laughs> you, were, you were free just to do jazz because it was jazz, jazz purists. It was it was quite astounding. I'm sure you'll throw some of that in uh, the next time we see you. Thank you for doing this. Thank you from me, from Michael, for the Purple Room, from Palm Springs. Uh, we're doing well on the on the GoFundMe, but people, people don't realize that you still need more. He needed money just to open. He's still closed all summer. He still he still has to put out X number of thousands. A month, you know what it costs to open a room. So um, I thank you so much, and I can't wait till everybody gets to hear you again live. Ah, thank you. And I mean, anytime. And if there's anything else I can do to help you support the cause, please let me know. Thank you. You know I will. <laughs> thank you. I love you. I Bye. Love you. <laughs>